how you doing? My name is Dave, and if you've got a synthesizer from the 1960s on your iPad, you can call me Davey Poo, the mobile music minstrel. How you doing? Hey, today, that's right, my face is back on camera because we're talking about iVCS3, a remake on the iPad of the original EMS VCS3 synthesizer put out in 1969. This synthesizer is absolutely incredible, but it was designed from a time when they hadn't standardized synthesizer language yet. The terminology and the design, well, this was right when people were first designing synthesizers, so they hadn't really figured out what to call everything yet, so everybody had their own language for everything and had their own way of doing things before it got into the 70s and more likely 80s where synthesizer design kind of got standardized. So this is kind of a daunting synth to program for many, myself included. It doesn't initially behave like many of the synthesizers you may have played before. So my goal today is to walk you through not just how to make a simple patch, but to make this thing behave a little more like a synthesizer that you're used to. I find that when I fire up a brand new synth that I've bought, the first thing I do is I usually create a bass patch, and it's usually a very similar patch to what I create on every other synth. And it's my way of getting used to the way the synth is, figuring out where things are that I'm familiar with. If I can get it to do something and behave the way that other synths do, then I immediately am more familiar with the architecture of the synth and have an easier time going forward and playing with it and making it sound wacky. This synth is the opposite of most synthesizers for me. Most synthesizers, the first thing you do when you fire them up is you get a totally standard, very playable, very easy to deal with patch, and then you have to work at it to get it to go crazy. This is the opposite. This starts at totally crazy, and then you have to take a lot of effort to dial it in to do something very basic. So hopefully me showing you how to make a very simple patch and get yourself going in a very traditional way will open the doors for you with VC IVCS3. So when you initialize a patch here, you are just gonna get the oscillator one, sending out signal. This is it. This is what you get when you fire it up. Isn't it glorious? Okay, so if you like the video, please, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. This is what you get when you first fire it up. Just the sine wave. Good times. So, let me take this out. I'm gonna undo those pins from the patch matrix. Now, let's zoom in on the matrix here. Anybody who has watched any of my videos before knows that I love 8 Matrix, and 8 Matrix is designed after this matrix from VCS3. The developer of iVCS3 is Alessandro from Apesoft, and Apesoft also made 8 Matrix, hey, go figure. So, if you're familiar with the idea of things coming in from the left-hand side and going out through the top, like it is in 8 Matrix, then you'll know your way around this matrix a little bit. The VCS3, let's talk about it just a little bit. This thing doesn't do you any favors, like a lot of the Apesoft apps. VCS3, again, from a time from before synths were standardized, doesn't make things easy for you. You have to tell it to do everything. It has a keyboard available here but you have to tell not only that when you press down on the key you want that to start a note but you also have to tell it that when you lift off on the key you want that to stop the note so yeah you have to think a little bit through it but i'm going to hopefully cheater mcbeater you and skip you right ahead to the front of the line here so let's get cracking let's talk about the inputs we have many different ways of controlling the sound here in vcs3 the keyboard being only one of them that's the one we're going to talk about today I'm going to switch over to the back. I'm going to make sure that input channels one and two here, here and here, are both switched all the way to the left. DKKS, that's the keyboard. It was the DK keyboard was the initial name for it when it was released, so he went with that same naming uh, convention here. So it's the, the DKKS is the keyboard. So if you flip those all the way to the, to the left, that means both the control inputs will be uh, voltage sent from the keyboard here. Again, the VCS3 is from a time when all of this stuff was determined by control voltages, actual voltages, X volts, X, you know, hertz, and all that kind of stuff, and resistance and pins and all that. And I, you know, my eyes cl cloud over when it gets into electrical engineering crap like that. I just can't deal with it. I want to just be able to play with it and make music. I'm a musician. I'm not an electrical engineer. Remember that, again, this architecture is from that time, so you have to be a little bit forgiving, and, and there's a little bit of a learning curve. So we now have set it on the back panel here so that the input uh, control is from the keyboard. Okay, I'm moving fast because I want to get through this quickly. I'm going to send the control from channel one here. Now you see, if I just press and hold, I get this nice thing. It shows me where I am. I'm going to send the control 
for channel one to oscillator one and the control for channel one to oscillator two. I'm gonna use this like a two oscillator synth. Okay, we're gonna have, uh, it's just like uh, an MS-20, right? It has two oscillators. We're gonna kind of use that idea. Not like a uh, Mini Moog, which has three oscillators. We're gonna skip that third oscillator. We're just gonna use the first two for now to make the actual sound. So we've got the control from the keyboard that's this going into oscillator one and two. Now we're going to send the actual sound of the oscillator. We're going to do use the sawtooth wave and we're going to send that out to first thing, the filter. Okay. If I scroll down a little here and send that out to the filter, we're also going to send the square wave from oscillator, to, oscillator two out to the filter. Then we're going to run the filter to the envelope. Boom. Okay. Right there. That connection. Filter to the envelope. Then we're gonna send the envelope out to the output. Now, look, we have sound, but my hands aren't on the keyboard. I'm not touching anything. Why is it making sound? Because this synthesizer doesn't behave like normal synthesizers that you're used to. You have to tell the envelope not to play itself. You have to tell the envelope that you want it to be controlled by pressing the keyboard. So let's do that. So if we double tap, we'll zoom back out here. If we go up to the envelope, now see this envelope section here with the red light flashing for attack. We're gonna set that up flat now so that it'll behave the way you're used to it behaving. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the attack all the way to zero, on all the way to zero, decay all the way to zero, off goes to 10, which is as manual. Now you see that the red light has stopped flashing. Watch this. You see here that when it's set to manual, that means that when I press down on the key, you see that the envelope opens by the red light lighting up, okay? Now I am pressing on the on-screen keyboard with a stylus right now. Uh, I'm not actually playing my keyboard. Why is the sound so quiet? Let's talk about that. This synthesizer doesn't behave like synthesizers that you are used to. So we have a main output here down at the bottom, which you can definitely turn up if you want, but I wouldn't start there. Let's start at a different place. Let's go back up here. These oscillators have an output volume, okay? Usually there's some sort of a mixer section on a uh, synthesizer and you have to mix the incoming signal from the oscillator and mix how loud you want. Here, the oscillators actually have an output volume. So I'm gonna take the sawtooth wave on oscillator one, and I'm gonna take the square wave on oscillator two, and I'm gonna crank them all the way. I'm gonna turn the other ones down. This is a great synthesizer because you can have oscillator one generating both a sine wave and a sawtooth wave at the same time. We're not gonna do that for this video, but that's a possibility. This thing can do so many amazing things. Okay, now I got a little bit more volume. We're gonna turn the signal here on the envelope shaper all the way up. All right, now we've got a listenable sound. So we adjusted everything in the envelope. Tack to zero, on to zero, decay to zero, off to manual, 10. Trapezoid doesn't matter right now because the trapezoid's not wired in and signals turned all the way up. Now, we have a basic, simple, I'm gonna go to the keyboard now. very basic patch. Now you can use this as a starting point to get yourself into the crazier territory, okay? You can go even nuttier here. So I'm going to pause right here. I hope you like this video. I hope this sort of made just making a basic sound a little more accessible for you. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up. It does help the channel and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to know more. If you like this video on IVCS3 and you want me to do more videos on IVCS3, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Below. There's going to be links to everything down in the description. And uh, I don't have anything funny to say for you guys at the end here. I really hope you dug this video. So, hey, I will see you guys next time.